Hey fellow star citizens, Star Wolf back with another episode of Wolf Pack. And now this week we have Canadian Egg. Hey Canadian Egg. Hello. Draven, how you been doing? How's it going? Doing good. And this week we've got Geo. I was on his channel along with Canadian Egg a while back and we talked about just basically Star Citizen in general. But uh, good, good hello to Geo. Thanks for coming. Oh yeah, anytime. Thanks for having me, fellas. This week we are going to do another kind of like a, a ship manufacturer spotlight. This time we're going into Drake. And I love their name. Uh, let's see if we love the ships as much. Oh, I do. So hopefully I their love. ships aren't as soft as Drake, the rapper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, honestly, when I think of Drake, I think of the, like, the dragon. Uh, kind of mm, a, a Drake, yeah. you know. So that's what I yeah. think of. So, Uncharted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're thinking a lot of, a lot of people. Um, so, yeah, I'm thinking fantasy lore. I don't know. You can tell where my yeah. head is. Uncharted but. was good though. Just saying. Yeah. True. True. Anyways, we're gonna jump into the hunt now, and our first subject, uh, Drevin, you got it. Uh, you wanna outline the Drake ship lineup for us? All right. Um, as most people probably know, there's the Cutlass, which is titled as a search and rescue vessel um there's the caterpillar which is titled as a transport vessel um then we have uh something that was a fun goal it's the drake interplanetary herald that's for information running and we have two more drake ships that have been quoted in lore they're the buccaneer and the privateer unfortunately i could not find actual any kind of role specific specifically named for either of those so We'll just have to wait and see what they do with it with that yeah so thanks for running through the list now canadian egg you want to go into a little bit more detail in the ones that we actually have details on uh yeah so the ones we actually know stuff about and uh some i've purchased already are the cutlass and caterpillar um now i'm a cutlass fanboy i absolutely love it i've i've never even considered regretting buying it because I've always thought it's just going to be one of the coolest ships. Uh, it's going to be, it's got these massive tier four thrusters in the back. It's got two of them and then it's got 16 tier two maneuvering thrusters, which is, so it's just going to be moving absolutely all over the place. Um, <clears throat> I see it in, which is another reason why it'll be good. Uh, sorry for, um, for search and rescue because it'll be able to get in and get out pretty quick. Uh, especially with the built-in tractor beam as well. Uh, it'll be nice. To, it'll be easier to grab ships like derelict ships or whatnot or just, you know, busted down areas or escape pods. <clears throat> or maimed ships. Or maimed ships, yep. Um, I see it compared to the Freelancer a lot, but I don't think it, I don't think it deserves to be there because uh, it's not in, it's not, because people, because of its size, people consider it a cargo ship. Not as much anymore with the recent update. Now that it's actually added guns and all that and more functionality, it's more. It people can see now. It's not. It's not a freighter. Yeah. Uh, that's where the that's what the caterpillar would take us. That's 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 what you want to compare to your freelancer. That's the transport freighter ship. It carries uh, the same amount as the freelancer. They're twenty tons. Um, larger crew than both the cutlass and the freelancer. Um, its upgrade spaces are the same as the Cutlass, though, 12, which are still more than the Freelancer. It's a... Catapult is a massive, massive ship, though. Um, two Tier 5 thrusters, eight Tier 2 maneuvering thrusters, um, and that's your, that's your rundown of the Caterpillar. It's gonna... It also seems like it'll just be a nice living ship as well, because it's got a lot of room and uh, a lot of area to move around in and move stuff. Cutlass is going to be your easy main, easy to maintain living ship. Cool. But yeah, that's so, the that's yep. those ships. Those are the two main ones. Um, so yeah, I suppose I agree with you on most of those points. Uh, if we're moving on to my topic, which is, you know, telling telling you guys if there's any standouts here, um, I say yes. Uh, I say the Cutlass is a standout ship. Right now, I mean, it's kind of somewhat alone in its class. Um, you just look at just look at all the ships available currently, and it's kind of in the middle of a lot of different uh, ships. Uh, and I've compared this multiple times to maybe like 
If you are attacking smaller ships, if you're a pirate and you have a cutlass, um, it's just a killer uh, for those smaller ships. It just, the speed on that thing, the cutlass, um, it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, cut, color, Cutlass has a real nice look to it, though. It's very unique. It's definitely its, a, its own ship. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking of my earlier two episodes, an episode back before the, the last one, my Cutlass pun. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Is it low shot? Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh. Canadian, Canadian, you've gone robotic, dude. <laughs> Sorry, we had to take a quick little break. Canadian egg was turning into a zombie um, there, so... Microphone wise, don't worry, I'm all right. Rejoin the call. <laughs> Anyways, what I was saying about the Cutlass was, I mean, just look at the. It's got two TR fours on that thing uh, as the main thrusters, and then it's, it's got sixteen TR twos for the maneuvering thrusters. This thing's just mm. like a mobile crazy beast, and it's got the uh, payload to really, you know, dish out some damage, especially to, like I said, the smaller ships. Like, look at the three hundred series. The M50, the Aurora series, the um, uh, Avenger. I mean, I think it could take any one of those, and uh, it could even take most of those in speed. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that is a standout ship. I mean, yes, when you're going up against medium-sized ships, it might not do as well, um, but, I mean, I don't think that's the purpose, and... Uh, of that ship and I think it's it's pretty unique at this point until they get another ship out that matches the cutlass it's a standout ship in its class you guys um, have anything on that one I do uh, one other great thing that I thought about the cutlass is the docking collar on it yeah now uh, just by eyeballing it I can say that's going to attach to the top of the constellation quite well oh. uh, so that means that's that that gives that means it's a ship that you can bring along with you <laughs> But I you, don't, you just I don't you know attach if you it. Want to <laughs> tango with a constellation with a cutlass? I don't know. No, I'm, no, I'm not. No, I don't. Sorry, I don't mean like invading it. Oh, okay. I, no, not raiding it. I, I, I mean, uh, like say, I say, say my buddy's got a constellation or he's got a cutlass, so we hop in either my constellation or cutlass, and we attach them, and then I come down to his constellation and we hang out during that bit, and if he's got a couple extra buddies in there. Yeah. Then we get attacked. His constellation crew gets in their battle positions. Yeah. Me and my buddies go back up to my cutlass. We get in our position, and then there we go. They're they're yeah. up against a Merlin, actually turrets, yeah. a constellation, a, and a cutlass. That's a killer combination there. Ooh. Yeah. Constellation and what if you got two auroras cutlass. on the side too? Now they're up against two more auroras. Legion I, of Doom. I, <laughs> I just yeah. I think it, it like that's one one reason that why I also bought the constellation. But that's for that's just another time. But yeah, it just it just so much it, it's got so much you can do with it. Yeah. It's going to be a troll hatch, man. People are just going to like <laughs> I'm going to tell someone to stand there and get ready to get into the to the turret. Yeah. I'm going to press the wrong button. <laughs> yeah. Drop them out of the out of the ship. <laughs> just, you know, I got to at least once. Yeah. Dude, drop pods. Well, make oh, make yeah. sure I'm on board while you do it. Uh, I want to watch. <laughs> Film it. it. Might be the one. No, no, no. I'm on to you. So, yeah, well, then we head on over to the Caterpillar. So the Caterpillar, um, I say it's kind of a yes and no standout ship. Um, the reason why I say that is because we have... Now, I'm just looking at statistically as far as size, um, thruster power, weapon capacity, uh, uh, personnel that are allowed on the ship, that kind of thing or are able to crew a position. And the Caterpillar is right in between what I see is the Freelancer, the Constellation. The Retaliator is a stretch. It's kind of farther out there, but it's... Oh, my, that's my favorite. <laughs> Retaliator is yours? That's fair. Yes, I, I can, love that ship. Man, I can see why, because like five, five TR-5 five thrusters on that thing. <sighs> It's, so, it's going to be so crazy fast. It's a beast. But, um, yeah, so the yeah. Caterpillar versus the Freelancer and Constellation is right there in the middle. You match it up to Constellation. It's not as fast as the Constellation, obviously, because Constellation has four TR-6s versus two TR-5s. And uh, just a little bit more weight there. But, uh, you know, so it's kind of right in the middle. So, I don't know. What are you guys' thoughts? Is, is this a really standout ship or not? 
but to be honest, I think I'll take this over the Constellation really? um, and and the other kind of small big ships, medium to big size ships, I should say. Yep. I like I like the way this looks over those and that's I, I, Star Wolf. I'd say you put it at a fair rating in between there, in between the freelancer, like better in the free better than the freelancer, but not quite constellation level. See, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I really don't think it's gonna outmaneuver the freelancer. I mean, it's twice the size. It's they both have the same eight TR twos, the uh, maneuvering thrusters. Whoa. They both have twice two the TR fives. Yeah, not the the twice caterpillar. The size. The caterpillar in length is sixty six point five meters. It is. Oh, the freelancer is thirty two meters. Okay, I thought you were talking about mass. Uh, okay, if we're no, talking about mass. measurements, okay. Mm -mm, no size. Yeah. But I think just by having the freelancer to be a smaller platform with uh, the same amount of thruster to to, and, and it's going to have a uh, a better thrust thruster to weight ratio than the caterpillar. So the caterpillar is a bit um, a bit heavier. I just think, uh, I kind of think the Freelancer would outmaneuver the Caterpillar, but the Caterpillar is going to be way, way more rugged. It's going to be durable, man. I, th I think it's really going to be yeah, a yeah. durable ship. Um, sure. I think, I, I've mentioned it in TeamSpeak quite a lot. I think it'd be a really good ship for uh, boarding actions. You can have, because it's going to be highly modular inside. You don't have to take that cargo. You can make uh, like an actual like living space for... Um, your boarding party and fly <laughs> this caterpillar into the fray and just be taking all sorts of fire while you get this uh, massive ship next to like say I don't know um, some type of capital ship maybe Idris or something and you would have the boarding party ready up and just you know swarm the insides of the Idris and I, I think it's that's really the type of ship yeah you know I'm yeah. gonna have Roy to Jackson ship I'm going to have to redact my earlier statement upon what you brought up, and that is the actual measurements, the size of the ship, um, and the slightly uh, bigger mass that it has, uh, because thruster-wise, maneuvering and main thrusters, it's the same as a freelancer, but you, yeah, you take the size into a to um, consideration and yeah I think actually it might be more maneuverable than the Caterpillar and the guns aren't like a long shot from each other they're pretty comparable so um, you might actually have a very decent fight there between those two ships uh, just simply because the Caterpillar is so big um, I think it might actually be a little bit harder to maneuver even though you know it's got some good guns it, uh, that freelancer might have a good shot at it so yeah I, I, uh, i'd have to take that back and and say you're probably right it's it's a good fair fight between those two i think it's just going to be a better living ship than the freelancer you know what i mean like the freelancer yeah. is it's 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 good at what it does it's good at exploring and it's good at transporting um but for just living it i don't think it's big enough yeah, it's pretty like it's pretty cramped in there. Like, the the caterpillar is actually thinner than the cutlass, but it's much much longer. Yeah, yeah. So I think almost twice as long. I think, so it, I think it's it looks be, uh, at least as far as on the look scale, it's cool. It looks cooler than the freelancer to me. <clears throat> oh yeah, for sure. Like I'm definitely gonna be picking one up. Uh, yeah. But it just it it's it, it looks like it's just gonna be an, a better civilian ship. Sort of like how they uh, repurpose like the retaliators, just without the repurposing and not as luxurious. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, any other comments on that ship in particular, or or the Cutlass, either either of the uh, Drake ships, um, before we move on to the outline session? Um, one thing I want to say is that these ships, uh, depending on your play style, so if you're going for like the pirate type. These ships uh, made by Drake is probably what you want to look at. They're really made for like militias and kind of local stuff. So a lot of the pirates are going to be using this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you, you mentioned militia. I think that's a good word because I can see like uh, police squads using something like a Cutlass. Uh, it's just a durable, very capable ship. Same as the Caterpillar. And, uh, mm. you know, boarding boarding parties, any kind of like military activity yeah especially i see the the cutlass is being pretty good at it so yeah, yeah they, they they do have like a pirate look to them like i said they said they're favorited uh by the pirates so they actually like the drake ships uh more than any other manufacturer so yeah 
And I thought it was kind of funny that they mentioned in the description of the Cutlass, they're like, this is the go-to pirate ship. And so now we're just going to have kind of like tinted glasses thinking like all all Cutlasses are pirates, you know? I know, and I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm, I, I hate they, when they stereotype our people. We Cutlass <laughs> pilots are, are good folk, good and honest folk. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, look at the names. I mean, look, Cutlass, Buccaneer, Privateer, Marauder. I mean, those those sound kind of yeah. It's ridiculous. It's yeah. absolutely ridiculous. But I love oh, yeah, it. I'm definitely stereotyping. Yeah, I forgot to mention the Marauder, man. I totally forgot about that one. Well, Do we know much on a Marauder? I don't think we know anything about the Marauder, to be honest. Marauder, no, it's, it yeah, Buccaneer, ass, Buccaneer, and Marauder. Cool, cool. All right, well, that is the hunt. Now we're gonna move on to the howling session and. Um, I'm kind of tired of starting it off, so why don't uh, why don't you start it off, Canadian Egg? Yeah, so um, just um, my topic for the Howling session is just sort of what's a uh, out of all these ships, even the ones that we don't know stats on, um, which which one are you looking at the most? Which one are you favoring? Uh, personally, me, it's the Cutlass. I love my Cutlass, and I will always stand by my Cutlass. But uh, <laughs> so, so do you mean by all the ships or just this class? Yeah, that caterpillar is going to be um, a close, a close second for me. But Cutlass just, is a, is just, my favorite. Just the Drake uh, ships. Uh, yeah, just okay, Drake. Just the Drake. Okay, okay. So uh, you, you're, cu- you're Cutlass fanboy. We know we. I we, am a Cutlass fanboy. That has been established. We understand that by now. So. <laughs> well, I'm going to keep reinforcing it. Yeah, so it's getting <laughs> to the point of the Merlin with me, with you and that Cutlass. <laughs> I, for me, out of the Drake ships. I'm more interested in seeing the Buccaneer and the Marauder. Uh, just, I'm just going by name alone at this point. But uh, past that, I mean, I have a Cutlass, and I didn't really like it too much. I might have mentioned this in another episode, but when they showed the new uh, changes to it in the most recent hangar patch, man, I, uh, I'm i actually kind of liking it. I, I, I might start, it might really start growing on me. It's kind of, I guess, like that ugly duckling yeah. thing. And, and, you know, next thing you know, it becomes a ugly swan that I kind of like. An ugly swan? Yeah, well, it's not beautiful, <laughs> so <laughs> I right. can't call it a beautiful swan. Right. Well, mine is, uh, well, currently the caterpillar, because that's what we can see, the, dra- the cutlass and the caterpillar. Just the looks of the caterpillar look nice. Since- I hate the cutlass look i i tell you i don't care if i offend you egg or what but i hate the look of that thing that, that hit close to home man <laughs> yeah. Ooh, Ooh. It wasn't cool. them's a fighting words <laughs> so um driven and i don't like I, even with the updates i still don't like the look of that ship i just can't get over it. statistically it's a pretty kicking ship it's got it's got its boxes ticked you know and everything but I just can't get used to the ship, just aesthetic. So uh, that's just me. I would be down with the Caterpillar. It looks cool, and I'm just so shallow, I guess. I just do things oh. uh, on, on looks uh, as far as ships because this is, you know, this is my dream. You know, it's like we're jumping into a, a, a space sim, you know, and the whole drive of fantasy, you know, uh, science fiction is like give me an awesome looking starship you know it's just gotta look sleek it's gotta look like i want to fly the thing even if it's not statistically awesome i'm still down with a good looking piece of metal so um i don't know that's just a vein in me speaking but uh, that's kind of how i roll on that one well i, I it's, even it's bought not... the i even bought the drake mouse pad oh god <laughs> <laughs> go ahead well, it's it's not even that it, I like the looks of it. It's just as far as a ship that has character, I feel like you know you walk in the Cutlass, you you sit in the seat, you look at it from the outside, yeah. and you can just sort of like feel like it has its own story to it. It's true. And I, and yeah. I mean, it's just I don't oh. know what it is. I I like how. It speaks volumes just looking at it and, and exploring it versus, you know, I I've seen some that. of the other ships and you get into them. You're like, wow, this is a nice ship. It looks good. It looks, you know, but there's like maybe me personally, there isn't a story yet for them that I've I've developed. I'll hmm. uh, I'll go ahead and respect that and uh, appreciate that from afar. 
Uh, so <laughs> I'll jump in your cutlass every now and then, but I'm not gonna buy one myself. Yeah, because yeah, my, well, my good over there. <laughs> my initial attraction to the cutlass was its maneuverability and speed. I was like, you're gonna be able to do some awesome things in this ship yeah. with these uh, with these thrusters, and that's what that's what initially sparked my interest. And then when I and then when that so I I was in from the start with that thing. I was like, that's just I'm gonna have so much fun with this thing. Yeah, I could change my viewpoint. Could change on it, you know. When I see Just how wait. kicking it is, I might wait till you to, fly one. Yeah, I might be able to deal with how ugly it is. So yeah. Well, with, with Star Wolf, I'm kind of with you. Like I said, when I first seen the Cutlass, um, I really didn't uh, like it. But once I seen uh, Tactical Advance go around and, and check it out, and he went in it, I start to like it. It grew on me. It's, it kind of reminds me like a like a villain on a movie. Like that'll be his. His ship and he, he, all his little minions or whatever are in the ship with him. It just gives me that type of feel. But out of the two ships right now, I'd probably go with the uh, the Caterpillar right now because, I like I said, I'd take that over the Constellation if I could get it right now. But in the future, I got a feeling it's either going to be Buccaneer or Marauder. And I'm leaning more towards the Marauder because I like the name, like uh, Drevin said, and I'm going to call it the Mardi Gras. <laughs> wow, <yeah. laughs> That's good name. Yeah. <laughs> good ships, good ships, guys. Good choices. Um, now, I have the last topic, and mine is going to be during the last letter of the chair, letter from the chairman when we hit the 40 million mark. Uh, it, he mentioned in there at the very bottom what we're going to be getting at the 42 million mark. And what we're going to be getting, one of the items was a towel. And uh, let me just read you the little blurb real quick. It says, and of course, everyone who backs before we hit 42 million will also receive a towel for their hanger. Don't, <laughs> don't explore the galaxy without it. So I guess it's this towel that you just can't leave the hanger without. Um, so like, what the heck? Like what? I, what I know what it? it is. It's a, it's a towel to wipe your tears away. Star Wolf wants my cutlass kick out maneuvers your ship. Uh, or, or a towel to wipe up the blood. Of your family. Okay, that's getting pretty dark. Yeah, that's, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> that's, whoa, that's whoa! That's what's. Hey, I, I might have to stop doing this podcast. <laughs> 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 just like this. Yeah, have to <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Good, I thought I you were just gonna say my yeah. character after you killed me with like your Merlin or something. That, that'd be more. That'd be more better. I I I'll reenact that and uh, say your character. Your virtual blood um, when my Merlin slashes through your cups. So, yes, we'll do that. Um, but no, on a, on a serious note, the towel, uh, I guess it stands without, you know, saying too much. You know, Squadron 42, 42, 42 keeps coming up. And, uh, you know, Chris Roberts and, and plenty of the other uh, developers have said it. They're uh, big fans of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And uh, Douglas Adams was the author. And basically what it the towel represents is in the book um it's quoted as being one of the most essential um tools that are useful items that a uh interstellar hitchhiker can have and i mean there's almost like this huge uh paragraph or section of this chapter that's just talking about the importance of having a towel so yeah. it's 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 paying homage to uh douglas adams and his series the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy yeah i didn't pick that up actually so that's good I, i'm glad i brought it up and you answered it because yeah i didn't pick that up from the hints he was given so can i use it to wipe my windshield though exactly i would they, hope they better give us a towel i mean i'm expecting one now so you guys are gonna go at it in a dogfighting module or nah oh yeah like a duel yeah so we ain't gotta worry about uh no one's ship getting hurt a duel yeah oh uh, yeah what what do you think yeah. Kanye? uh yeah, I'm gonna kick your butt. Yeah. So prepare. You probably will. <sighs> yes. <laughs> that's uh, just all. That's all I have to say right now. Okay. Is just uh, beware, beware of the egg. All right, beware of the egg. I'll have that <laughs> embroidered on my towel. Fear the egg. Feel the yolk. <laughs> Feel the yolk. <laughs> Feel the yolk. <laughs> I'm gonna be. Uh, uh, you better. When I come at you, I'm gonna. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna get cracking. All right, oh, we're gonna, oh, we're gonna no. just end it, dude. We're gonna end it. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, wait, wait, I gotta bring up my another, topic. Another terrible uh, pun. Oh yeah, yeah, you has got a topic. You got a topic, okay? Oh yeah, okay. Um, and my topic is: Will we be able to have 
some type of a droids because I've been watching uh, Clone Wars on Netflix uh, lately. I've been catching up on it, and I seen the the medical bay droids helping out and fixing up the the clone troopers. And I want to know if will we have some type of droids, R two D two, C three PO type droids in the game to help our ship out, repair it, and you know stuff like that. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, they have actually talked about that stuff, and. Uh, we've got a little information on it. I, uh, I'm i sure Driven's going to jump in on this one because he, he knows a lot more about that particular subject than I do. But one thing I wanted to mention was I kind of see... Have, have you guys played Hawken at all? Is that mech yep. game? No, I haven't. Okay. Well, in it, you can actually take time to repair. You can, like, shut down and have your little droid fly up and repair some stuff. And... Um, you know, I can see some kind of mechanic like that, be it more in depth, um, like an AI that you can actually control to tell him, or it, not him, uh, to go fly over to a specific damaged component and, you know, enact repairs. Uh, so I, I kind of see it happening like that. Um, but yeah, like, Drevin, I know you have mentioned stuff on this subject before, so what, what do you got for us there? Um, they've already promised to original backers and I think veterans too that they're going to get a uh, I can't remember the call sign for it but it's a, it's a repair bot um, they did mention that there will be repair bots for some of the bigger ships I don't think you'll get one for probably like the Hornet or probably even the maybe the 300 series because there is some space you could probably have one in there but there, there will be ways to repair yourself or you can have a bot to do it. I would assume probably maybe constellation size would be the smallest ship that we have currently that could have a mm. maybe like a fully functioning repair bot. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Um, yeah. But then they also mentioned that there's going to be bots you can have in your hangar that will, you know, automatically repair your ship and stuff like that. Um, if Or will do whatever you tell it to, I guess. But uh, there, there will be some interesting stuff, and I'm sure they can expand on that eventually. Who knows? Maybe we'll even have uh, bots that you can use for mining. You know, I mean, we we have yeah. the yeah, they've shown that giant mining uh, tick, as most people like to call it, and then yeah. they <laughs> talked about how there's going to be personal handheld uh, mining stuff. Well, I don't see why they couldn't have rep- mining bots or anything like that. You know. Yeah. 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 Just uh, uh, one thing on the topic of repair bots. They're not going to be able to fix your Merlin Star Wolf. Oh, you're bringing it <laughs> back. You're bringing it <laughs> back. And I'm sorry, I just have to. your cutlass either. Opening up old wounds. They won't have to. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah. The, thing's All right. gonna, the thing's a clunker. It's going to break down on the side. Easy to maintain. That is part of Drake's back. marketing. What? It, it, they are easy to maintain. It's also and repair. A very cheap. Yes, yeah, cheaply manufactured. Cheap. Not uh, if you look after it well. Cheaply built. Oh my goodness. This is just horrible banter. Sorry just, for the viewers just, for having yeah. to, uh, to Star live Citizen through Flame War. Canadian eggs, bad puns, and our horrible <laughs> banter. And uh, my, my evil threats of family death. But, uh, you know, that's kind of how we're rolling this week, I suppose. A little bit different. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah, whatever. It was that's fun. That's how we roll that's in tactical advance, baby. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> it's a bit cutthroat yeah. this week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get, or should I say cutless? Oh. Ooh. I knew that was coming. <laughs> the second you said, or should I say, I'm like, I'm not the only one with a pun this week. Oh, I had nice. to. I gotta, I I gotta had think to. of a pun for next time. But, anyways, we're gonna wrap it up. So, uh, thank you, uh, Canadian Egg. Yep. Hands around your neck. And then, Draven, <laughs> thank you for being here, too. Thanks. And, uh, Gio, I really appreciate you stopping by and uh, being on the channel. Uh, we'll have to do Wait. it more often. Oh, yeah, anytime, man. I'll be through there. Yep. All right, guys. Well, thanks for stopping by and make sure to catch us next week on the Wolf Pack. See ya.